Alright, um, I hope everyone's having a good time so far. Uh, we're about to start with the next presentation by Tarek Raimo about spying and infiltration in EVE, which is of course a major part of the game we all play. Uh, before that, two uh, things I want to mention. The first is the tattoo artists have arrived. In fact, they've already done their first tattoo. Um, I noticed that not everyone was aware of this, so if you want to get an EVE tattoo, it's better to go to them sooner rather than later. They're not going to be around all day. Um, and the second thing is about CCP Quant's presentation. It's cancelled. No, it's not cancelled. <laughs> it's not cancelled. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Um, he has a lot of material. So, um, there's an option to have it start a little earlier so that he has a bit more time. I want to see how you guys feel about that. Should we start it? Yeah. Yeah. So, CSP Quant is going to start at 5 instead of 5.30. Uh, so the break between presentations is a little shorter this time. Uh, but that gives him a bit more time. And then, uh, now I'll give the mic to Tarek. Yeah. Go on! Thank you. Yeah. Well, so, I'm Tarek Raimo, I am a writer and editor for Crossing Zebras. Maybe you have read some of my scribblings, maybe not. When I'm in game, I fly for the Galente Militia. They all represent here. However, today I'm not going to talk about anything related to that. I'm going to talk, as you see, about spying and infiltration in EVE Online. When I was on my first Easter dump here, two years ago, Valentine was standing here and explaining that he wanted to make a connection between the event at the venue and the content. And because here in the Netherlands are a traders nation, he had a few people invited to give presentations who were into industry, into trading. Uh, there was people from Red Frog. What people don't know so much about the Dutch or about one particular Dutch person is that there was a very, very famous spy who was a Dutch woman, Mata Hari, maybe you've heard of her. Um, and uh, so spying is also something that connects with us Dutch people. And this is what I'm going to talk about today. And to begin with, I want to start with a bit of personal history. How did I get into all of this? I started playing 2007-8ish, around that time, I don't exactly remember my, my specific starting time. And back then I had read a few things, as many other people had, about the heists, about the infiltrations, about the spy game in EVE, and Guiding Hand Social Club, that whole drama that uh, played out there. And because I have a background in social science, I was amazed by that idea. There is a, there is a game where things like that can happen, and I was thinking, like, what must the social dynamics be that allow for something like that to be going on? And since I've never had played any MMOs before, I thought, oh, let's give that a shot, let's see what that's like. However, when I started, <laughs> I ended up bogged down by tutorials and missions, and uh, I, was in, I ended up in a high-sec mission running corporation, like many other people do. That guy back then who ran that corporation, he impressed me by having a battleship. <laughs> um, that was actually in 2008, a battleship was still a cool thing, at least in Isaac. And uh, yeah, so I, <laughs> so I was hanging around with, uh, with those guys for some time, and that ended up in a way that many people will be familiar with. We got ganked, we got canflicked, we got griefed, we got hunted by war deckers. Eventually, our little, small Care Bear Empire dissolved. The people went rage quitting, the people left the corp, there was a lot of internal drama, the CEO got blamed with stuff. He dissolved the corporation, I think he quit the game a month or two later. And I was alone again, all alone in EVE, so I decided to join the winning team. I, the only other people that I, I had any meaningful interactions with were those last war deckers who destroyed us. And they were, of course, like, yeah, sure, come on, join us, you will be having fun killing newbies, and so we did. But, one of those corporations that they war decked, they were as non-belligerent as most high-sec mission runners, miners, and industrialists, but they had crap tons of money. And they hired mercenaries. Those mercenaries gave us quite a beating. 
And when I say Asta, the grief accord that I was with. And uh, yeah, uh, they didn't quite win though. They killed our ships, but they didn't quite manage to win. And at that time, something happened that reminded me of why I joined the game in the first place. Back then, uh, yeah, unfortunately, my, my excuse is the, the lettering got kind of like swallowed by the images in the transfer and export of the slides. Mm. It wasn't like that originally. Anyway, it will work. So, back in those days, it was the time when Hargoth Agamar and the Mitanni and some other people from the Goons together did their great caper where Band of Brothers got dissolved because Hargoth Agamar was actually infiltrating the Goons but then he liked it with the goons, and they turned him around. And he then worked against his friends in Bands of Brothers. And I, I remembered, oh yeah, right, that was what I wanted to do in-game. By the way, question in between, does anybody recognize uh, who that uh, wry, uh, wryly smiling young fellow here is? Well, I am going to tell you, this is Niccolo Machiavelli. Uh, People might be familiar with his works. I'm, I'm a great fan of his, but not so much the prints or what people think is written in this book. But anyway, that's, I digress. So I did something new. I thought, okay, those mercenaries, maybe I could work for them. So I got in contact with them and I said, hey, guys, what if I become your spy? I tell you how you can win against those griefers because I, I'm with them, I'm on the inside, I know everything. They said, yeah, sure, go ahead, what can you tell us? And I said, Look, okay, they have those and those ships and they have them stashed there and there and they're kind of planning to do this and that and here are the fits and so the, the griefers, they, uh, the, the mercenaries, they came with hard counters for everything. They were always one step ahead of us. Ah, yeah, then a lot of internal drama happened and if you think that those high set war deckers are made of any tougher material than the average care bear, then you're wrong because they also had lots and lots of tears in, 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 internally and there was a lot of drama. One guy stole half of our assets and, and went they war with them. Yeah, so the, that's, uh, that little war decker corp got internally blown up, it collapsed under the moral strain, under, under the strain. And I thought, oh, great, I pulled it off. And, uh, I said to the mercenaries, what, if, you, what if, I, if I keep working for you? You are fighting mercenaries, I'm your spy mercenary. And they said, sure, go, let's go join those guys over there. This is our next target and we'll pay you something. And I got a cut out of their next contract, which was 110 million. <laughs> I, I, was about, I was about seven months old back then. 110 million. I thought, my god, I'm going to get filthy rich doing this. <laughs> so the, 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 the mercenaries, they went on and I went on working for them uh, in, in, that, in that particular capacity and they moved into Nalsek. <laughs> Eventually they also sort of like dissolved. There was no drama this time. They just sort of like, yeah, the, the CEO sort of burned out and then people went different directions. So I kept in touch with them and I expanded on my work. So now I want to go a bit into what, it, what's, what it's like to be a spy. What do you need to do? What can you do? And what should you do and what should you not do? And uh, one of the things that I want to say as a disclaimer right in the beginning Spy work is not for everybody, and a lot of Eve players will have quite a few difficulties with it, and why, you will see in the next slide. Because being a spy requires a lot of social skills, and Eve players are not known for those. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, need to be, you need to be a really good listener. Uh, what you want uh, in, uh, as a spy, information and uh, what people call intelligence, is your trait. And so you want to have people tell you about stuff. Be the shoulder that they can cry on. Be the guy that everybody feels at ease with, that they like to talk to, like, you know, on those long nights when you're sitting on a Titan and waiting to finally be bridged, and you shoot the shit, or during gate camps, or, or during fleet form-ups. There are always people who want to talk, and who want to vent, and who want to get rid of their frustrations. You also need to keep your ego in check. You shouldn't be like the guy who starts arguments with everybody, who always knows better, who always is uh, 
coming out of a left field with some radical opinion on, on things. Because if you are the, that kind of person, then people are not necessarily at ease with you. And they should be. You also have to be at ease with them. You have to be a good sport and you have to be at ease socially. Like if people make jokes about you, jo laugh with them. Make jokes on your own expense. The less serious people take you, the better it is for you. And there is, there is something here, which is not written down here, for our fellow female Eve players. If you are a woman, that kind of work is so much more easy. <laughs> I, have, I have seen what happens there. Um, and, and there, there was actually a moment when somebody su suggested to me, like, why don't you, why don't you make a, like, a, like a super hot girl odd and, and use a voice changer? Um, I, I did try, I, I made it as well that I could, could sound like Siri. Uh, but not necessarily like a convincing woman. Um, but I have I've seen and I've heard from, uh, from stories that uh, being a girl in EVE and being a spy is a winning combination. Um, so, you also, of course, need to be really patient. <laughs> if you... Uh, uh, spy work is not uh, push button, uh, receive bacon. You sometimes need to spend weeks, even months, uh, being with one crew, gaining information, infiltrating, setting up your... whatever coup or heist you are pl uh, planning to do. And you have to stay very detached. Don't forget. You are hanging out with people, you are on comms with them, you're in fleets with them, you listen and you talk with them, and your goal the whole time is to betray them. And uh, that is something that creates a bit of a dissociation in your head, if you're not a complete sociopath. Um, <laughs> and it, it, uh, admittedly, it was, was one of the reasons why eventually I stopped with the spy game because it started doing my head in. I couldn't really deal with it anymore at, uh, at some point. But um, to go a bit more into the, into the nitty gritty, how you build your spy career and, and, and what your tools are as a spy, the first thing you always want to do is you have to find your mark. Like who is the organization going to be that, that you are going to infiltrate? If you want to start easy, you can start with some uh, high sec corporation or or some uh, uh, null sec renters. Are renters still a thing? I haven't been in uh, null sec for some time. Yeah. Um, anyway, like like some people who have low security protocols, who don't necessarily check your API or check your code background. Uh, that is that is an easy mark that you can infiltrate. It might not necessarily be the mark where you want to go, but let's say you have great ambitions that you want to become a spy inside Pandemic Legion. You don't necessarily start by applying to Pandemic Legion. You start by applying to Horde or Waffles. And then you get to know people who know people and then they will refer you and eventually you end up where you want to end up. And then you have already built up a history that people know you and vouch for you you're not a spy. Not like that guy who just got joined yesterday and has this like really dodgy cop history. So for that to build your narrative, you have uh, you have to imagine yourself as another person that is another Eve player that is not particularly you. And this narrative, it's like if, if any of you ever played pen and paper role playing games, you will know how that works. You make a character, you invent a background for that character, and then you follow how this character would act. And you do the same as a spy in Eve. You also need to clean house. Like, let's say you are moving from one thing to another. You uh, just came back from um, rolling over like some corporation, and then you want to join another one. Collect all your assets together. Don't, if, if you say like, oh yeah, I'm this guy who just came from running missions in Vysek, um, don't have anything lying around in an OSEC station. That looks so suspicious if people look at your API. Or if you say like, hey, yeah, cool guys, I would like to be part of your cool little PvP group. <coughs> uh, don't have some solo PvP uh, fits in your hangar that look like you actually know how that works, because then you will not be the starry-eyed newbie. You also really need a second account. 
The reason why you need a second account is because you are going to need to keep everything you do with your spy main completely separate from any interaction that you have with the people that you are spying for. The people who you are spying for are not supposed to know who you are on the other side and vice versa. Because spying doesn't work in only one direction. It could actually be, and this has happened to me, that the guy who is handling the spies on one side is actually a spy from the other side. It has happened that like, within the counterintelligence department of one alliance were spies from the other alliance. And if, if then they know how to make the connection, then they can, they can break open your undercover identity on the other side, and you don't want to have one. So you, need a, you really need a second account. Back in those days when I, when I started, I, I did it like with recycling trial accounts, and like paying them for a month, and then like biomassing them again, and so on and so forth. Actually, the, the, the um, <coughs> CCP3 back then uh, once wrote me a letter. Uh, saying, what are you doing there? Are you doing some money laundering for RMT? <laughs> it's like, no, 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 I'm doing money laundering because I'm a spy in game. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what is also really uh, useful is to, to start a journal. I always called it my spy journal. <laughs> and, uh, and you write down things that you learn. And not only pause passwords or, uh, or where the staging towers are or where the jump bridge network goes and all those things, but also write down names like who are the main FCs? Who are the, who are the main drama causers in the group? Who hates who the most and who likes who the most? Who are the people who trust each other and who are the people who distrust each other? Every day when you log in, when you go on fleet, when you talk to people, you make those notes and over time, you get a whole picture of how that, sorry, of how that alliance works. And in this work process, you learn the ropes inside of the alliance, like uh, how do their comms work, do they have a forum, are you expected to participate on that forum, and in which way can you participate there. Um, and always do that. Always be there. Be the, the stand-up guy. Is there, if there's a fleet, join it. If there is a writing CTA, join it. If there's a mining CTA, join it. And the more crappy shit you do, the more terrible chores you do, the more people will like you and the more people will trust you. And throughout, throughout all of this you, you start to absorb more and more knowledge and once you have enough in your hands you can go and find yourself a customer. Somebody that you can sell the information to if you don't already have one. And in my own history, I started out, like I said, with this mercenary group. So basically, I worked already for them, and they knew me. But when I left them, I started going freelancer, and I did my own thing. And uh, and then I, I actually needed to find customers for my information. Before I'm going to talk about customers, I will mention a few things which you should avoid. <coughs> Exposing yourself seems like a no-brainer. But there are many ways how you can expose yourself. And not necessarily like, oh yeah, guys, yeah, that's, that's a sino that dropped you in the wrong place, that was me actually. No, uh, it's, um, you can expose yourself by breaking character. Like for example, uh, if you came into a corporation pretending you are the, that mission running newbie, and they have a discussion about fleet fits, and you start participating in this discussion, uh, with, uh, with a qualified opinion, then they will wonder, like, hey, how the fuck do you know all that? <laughs> so, always keep in mind that you should keep the information about yourself contained and that you should always remain in character. You also never in-game interact with your agent. Your agent is your alt. Like, I, I called it my Swiss bank account. And, um, <laughs> You keep all of that separate, you never use that alt to post anywhere, you never use uh, uh, the alt to, um, do, to give, give the API to anybody. That's, that alt API remains with that alt and nobody else. You don't join corporations, nothing like that. Uh, you also don't brag. 
like the, the, um, there is one nice saying that I heard in a documentary about spying in the Second World War, where one of the people there said, there is no such thing as a famous spy. Um, Matahari, the woman I mentioned at the beginning, she's really famous, but she got executed. Um, <laughs> in EVE Online, like, Mitani is famous, but Mitani is no longer a spy. He is now the sort of like public figurehead of his uh, alliance. Uh, so he, he can talk about what he did back then. And it's not like anybody will hate him more for it than... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's impossible to hate Mitani more. Mm. Uh, also, also never, never overplay your hand. Uh, like, uh, if you are in a situation where you can pull off something really great, like some major heist or, or uh, instigate the destruction of half super capital fleet, that is great, but you also might wonder, is it worth it at that time to do that? Because that could be a career-ending move. That could be something that exposes you and then you need to sell your character and biomass your character, uh, otherwise you're not going to get in anywhere else except in some really, really insecure corporations who really don't pay any attention. And also avoid shenanigans with the API. There are many people who will try to get into corporations as infiltrators, and when they are asked for an API, they submit one that doesn't actually include all the rights that they have been asked for. Usually, a corp recruiter will spot that immediately, and you are immediately suspicious. In most cases, they will not even take your application. So don't do that. And also, always think about what the API can do for the people that you work for. They can read all your emails. They can go through all your assets. They know where your money comes from. They uh, know who you have had any dealings with and of course all your kill mail, mails, etc. And uh, so you have to make sure that you keep control of this. This is what I, what I earlier said in the, in the whole cleaning house part. When you, when you clean house, you make sure, for example, that your API history, uh, uh, your wallet history in, 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 that is queryable by the API, goes only back so and so far. So you make, you make sure that you bury anything that were, were transactions that you don't want people to know about. You bury them under shitloads of sales of crappy stuff, like go salvage some missions and, and then sell everything separately. Uh, so you can, you can bury your transactions. One of, the, one of the things that I really liked to do when I needed money, and of course I couldn't transfer money from, uh, from my Swiss bank account to my uh, spying main, I would go to Jita and then I would do these things where yeah, there's an item that is like one million but I, I put it on sale for one billion and then I buy it with my other account. And then I go back to the guys and say, ah, look at that idiot, I just scammed somebody in Cheetah. And everybody would pat me on the shoulder, like, yeah, well done, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but that is also something where you can overplay your hand. You, you don't do that like every day, because at some point people will say like, are there really that many stupid people in Cheetah? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you, then you point them to the ESC bubbles and say yes. <laughs> So, um, what, what can you do when you are operating on the inside? Uh, the, the easiest, uh, what, what most people usually do, is like AWOXing and other traps. Um, that can be like, yeah, you, you just like shoot the FC during a fleet uh, fight. Uh, yeah, no-brainer, but not particularly funny. There are other things that are a bit more subtle, like you, you light a Sino by accident, too close to a station, and then that jump freighter will go like, boom! And somebody tackles it and kills it. And uh, or you can you can uh, light sinos um, that that lead people directly into traps if they don't particularly check what you are doing. Cold theft falls into the same category. You can yeah you can do like nice capers and heists and, and get really rich, but those are usually career-ending moves. Usually in those situations, people will know who did it. And uh, except if they are rather oblivious or if they are in a wormhole corp. <laughs> Uh, for, I personally never infiltrated wormhole corps, but I'm told it's very... Once you get in, where you usually need to give uh, blood samples and, and, uh, and, and one of your children as hostages, 
Uh, <laughs> Don't forget the pathology exam. To, uh, join a mm. war war. But once you're in, they are actually supposedly rather easy to roll. Um, never tried it myself, so I can't speak to that matter. Um, but, but those two things, that there is actually a really nice uh, blog, I, if it's still up, it used to be really active back in the days, called My Loot Your Tears, um, which is written by people who have made AWOXing and ninja looting and corp thieving their main thing. And uh, if you want to read about that, then, then you can go to this blog. Um, my personal approach is a bit, uh, was, a, was a bit more different. Um, logistics and infrastructure was one of the things that I liked to do most. Because if you run the jump freighters, if you seed the markets, if you fuel the post towers, or these days, citadels, um, you will know how the infrastructure works. If there is a large deployment, you are usually, after the main FCs, one of the first people to know where is the staging system going to be, what is the fleet doctrine going to be, because you are the person who is bringing all the stuff there. You are the person who is taking the carrier and bringing everything over there. And I tell you, jump freight and logistics are something that people usually don't like to do. And if you do it, everybody will be really thankful and you have a lot of information. And you can also play funny things. For example, yesterday we were talking about uh, the most expensive loss that uh, one of us ever had. My most expensive loss was uh, 13.5 billion. And that was a jump freighter full of stuff. And uh, it got killed very, very sadly um, in, a, in a way that I set up. <laughs> Unfortunately, because of that, uh, um, the ship replacement program was a bit delayed. And then a lot of people got really angry, and then there was a lot of drama, and then people didn't come to the next two fleets because of that. And uh, then the Alliance uh, lost a very strategic time. That was uh, during the war of uh, uh, goons and tests together against uh, the then Southern Coalition. Um, yeah, uh, manipulation and destabilization is also a really, really fun game. Uh, if you have uh, ever played, the, there's a card game called, uh, called Illuminati. If any of you, have, has anybody ever played that? Uh, if any of you did, uh, in this game you are supposed to, to really sort of like betray each other. And, uh, and this is what you are also doing here. And, uh, and this is where your spy journal becomes really, really valuable and your social skills become really, really valuable. And it can, it can be really nice, like there, there are always those big egos who have an issue with someone. And then you say like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that FC is kind of a douchebag. I also really don't like him that much. And you know what, like, uh, Joe also doesn't like him. He told me. And then you go to the FC and you say like, you know what, those two guys who are always bitching around, yeah, they have been bitching to me, and they really don't like you, they have an issue with you. And, and you, you sort of like, you, you see seeds of dissent and, uh, and, and, and poison the well, so to say, within an organization. The more people there are who, who are uh, up to causing drama, the more you sort of like fan flames quietly from the corner, being the nice guy. And uh, this can snowball into quite interesting, uh, into quite interesting uh, uh, situations, actually. Recruiting is also really nice to be in, because if you are one of the recruiters, you can actually help uh, the organization that you are spying for to bring more spies into the place. Or you can let people in where you know, like, okay, this guy, like, I actually know him from some other corp, and he caused a lot of drama there. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna accept him for this corp. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, there is battlefield intelligence, which is like which works best if you are another role that people usually don't like to do so much scouting. Because if you're a scout, you usually lose your ship or you don't get on all the kill mails and etc. etc. So yeah, if you are scouting for a hot drop, and uh, you can at the same time tell the people that you're working for, yeah, okay, they're, 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 I'm scouting right now in this and this region. And, uh, and there is a Titan in jump range, 
and uh, or a bridge range in this case, and they are preparing to bridge so and so much stuff, and they have this and this prepared for escalation. So yeah, um, think about it. Maybe you can set up some nice bait and uh, have a nice counter drop uh, prepared. Always works wonders, and it's it's usually quite quite um, inconspicuous because it happens all the time. Like uh, yeah. Uh, Good game, you counter dropped us, you were a bit smarter, it happens. So, uh, the, this is already the last slide, um, the next slide in any case. This is about uh, the thing that I've left out so far, but talked around a bit, is a uh, relation with your customer, the people you are working with. So if you don't have anybody uh, who is basically deploying you as a spy, you want to find someone. And uh, my experience always was living in NullSec, like this is what I'm, what I'm talking about, is like really mostly soft NullSec based experience. <coughs> living in NullSec, what I found out, uh, one of uh, really thankful customers are people who live in NPC NullSec. They are usually smaller organizations. They are facing large organizations around them uh, that are usually more powerful in numbers, more powerful in um, in logistics and everything, but tactically they are not so good. So those people uh, fight against them with advanced tactics and with an advantage in intelligence. And this advantage in intelligence you can provide for them. One of my methods that I like to use is just like, uh, I start a trial account, I write to uh, one of the opposing FCs or another contact that is in their corp description with that trial account. Saying like, yeah, okay, this is just a trial account and you don't know me, but I'm on the inside. And uh, to prove to you that I'm on the inside, here is something. You give them a sales pitch. You give them something simple, uh, like you don't, you don't give them passwords to the main staging tower, or you don't give them the location of uh, some super secret uh, wormhole operation where they are building tech threes and making shitloads of easy. This is not what you open up with. You open up with something simple, but uh, something that is worthwhile. Like, yeah, let's say you say, like, ah, oh, they're going to deploy a tower there and there for um, moon mining, let's say. And, uh, and it's going to happen at this time because I know, because I'm going to be the person who's deploying it. And, uh, and then you can come and shoot my ship. And, uh, and you get the tower and you get a kill mill. And you get proof that I am actually a genuine article. And, uh, in this way, you try offering something that engages the other party, and nine out of ten times you don't get an answer back, or they say like, "Yeah, why should we trust you? You are portraying your guys. Why do you think? <laughs> why do you think we should consider you trustworthy?" Um, but then there are the ones that do bite, and if they do bite, you eventually come to the point where you want to sell them stuff for easy. And then you come to the question of payment, and payment is really difficult in this situation because, like I said before, you cannot accept any ISK from your contractors, or your contractees, uh, that come directly to your main account, because this main account has probably an API somewhere with the organization of the corp, and they are monitoring you. So yeah, you have to find a way of money laundering, or you just keep your money in your like I call it the Swiss bank account, and once you leave and you delete your API, first thing, always, first thing you always do when you leave one call is you delete your API, and then you clean everything up again. <laughs> and then you can cash out. I personally, uh, at some point, I had like my, my Swiss bank account plexed because there was enough uh, uh, ISK in there, and, uh, and I just like, kept it running, and uh, yeah, that was like my retirement fund. And uh, eventually, when I stopped Eve and when I started playing again, I cashed that all out, and then I managed to kind of like have a really nice start uh, beginning with Eve again. Um, if you are really, really lucky, then uh, you can get a permanent contract. I actually, maybe it's not so much luck. Maybe there are enough spies that have permanent contracts. Many spies will usually come from within an organization themselves. Like they, they, like let's say you are you are in Goons and you want to have a spy in PL, or you are in PL and you want to have a minimum of twelve spies in Black Legion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and still not get that random deal. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, shots fired, yes or no. Uh, then, uh, then you know, most spies will come from within an organization. What I'm talking about here uh, is, is not a spy that is within an organization. It's like being a freelancer, being a mercenary. So, in this case, being on a permanent contract is really nice. And uh, one of the people who were in this mercenary, uh, was in this mercenary co um, corporation that I sort of like started out with, he ended up uh, at some point in uh, IT Alliance. And, uh, and he, he approached me at some point and said, like, yeah, do, do, you, do you still do that fucked up spy shit? And I said, yeah. Hmm. He's like, yeah, you know, um, we have, we have quite a problem with all kinds of people around here. Do you, you want to infiltrate any of them? And, and I said, oh, sure, I can, I can see what, what I can do for you. And then I ended up on a contract with those guys for 500 mil blanket payment a month. And then, uh, and then bonuses for different things. That can work out really well and, uh, and sort of like uh, set you up with a, with a nice retirement uh, fund in EVE, if that's, uh, if that's your cup of tea. To close it off, what I would like to do is uh, to, to offer also a few words of warning. Um, like I said, this is, uh, this is psychologically quite weird, this sort of gameplay, and it can uh, really do your head in, and it did with me after four years. <laughs> and I also heard quite a few <laughs> stories, uh, that was also one of the reasons why I stopped spying, uh, because I heard a few stories. Uh, those of you who have been around for a time, you might have heard of Eastkunk. Eastkunk was created by uh, mostly two people. One of them was uh, a girl. Uh, most people didn't know that she was a girl. She went by the name of Tempest in game and also had a persona that she was using on podcasts with like a really, really distorted voice uh, called Mr. Black. And Mr. Black was this enigmatic figure. And then at EVE Vegas, I think it was in 2012, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe 2013, she outed herself. And uh, interestingly, interestingly enough, this uh, young woman comes from the same messed up background as myself. She studies soci sociology, so bad for her. Um, and, um, and she outed herself like, I'm Mr. Black and I'm doing a presentation on spying here now. And what happened back then was that uh, she got she got dogs, she got harassed, uh, people sent her death threats, people sent her death threats to her house, delivered personally. Um, she had to cancel her cell phone account, she, had, she canceled all her social media accounts. If I'm not completely mistaken, she even had to move house because she felt so paranoid about it all. And I thought, like, ah, wait a second, yeah, I think I potentially pissed off quite a lot of people. <laughs> Think. And yeah, there are people in this game who actually do take things way too seriously. And I want to say as a disclaimer here, and, and uh, that the people who were, who were back then really pissed off at her because like today everybody is like pointing at those big guys, say how evil they are. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pointing at those B guys. Um, but I'm not going to say how evil they are, because the guys who did that back then to Tempest, no guns involved. So if you think that there are only one group of people in this game who are really messed up in the head, <laughs> then you are wrong. <laughs> Especially those people from Galantia Militia, they all come from broken homes. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not completely trivial, but it is very, very interesting, very intriguing, and it can be, in a really strange and perverted way, fun. So, I'm closing the official presentation here, and we can go to a Q&A. So if you have any questions for me, you can, uh, you can ask away. Um, uh, I tell you right away, don't ask me to, to uh, name any names or... or, uh, or <laughs> Expose anybody, I won't, uh, but uh, anything else goes.
experience with uh, spies going native in organisations? Because obviously you have to go quite deep to get into positions of power. Have you ever heard stories about people intending to spy on an organisation and then ending up just being a part of it? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the story in the beginning that I told uh, about uh, Hagrid Agamar, that is the classical story of that happen, happening where somebody went native. It also happened to me myself. At, at some point, uh, I was hired to, um, to spy on Black Legion. And, um, and I actually liked Black Legion. So I, I didn't spy on them, I just like, flew with them. Um, what, what also ha can happen is, is, the, is the absolute reverse. I had a really funny conversation with Buddha Buddha uh, last FanFest, where I told him, yeah, uh, everybody always ripped on test alliance that you, don't, you guys don't have security. But uh, when I tried infiltrating you, I made it three weeks, and then I, 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 had, to, I had to leave. I, it, was just, it was just unbearably terrible. <laughs> We found one of the 12 PL spies. Uh, <laughs> have you ever been offered contracts or found yourself in situations where you said, I have to step away, I'm not going to go through with this? No, no. Uh, uh, apart, from, apart from that thing with, uh, with Test Alliance where I failed, it was not like that I didn't want to do it, but I couldn't. Um, <laughs> best anti spy security ever. Um, <laughs> I, I never, no, I never had, uh, I never had this situation. There are things where I would have, set, where, like, where I would have set the line, like this is not what I'm gonna do. I never wanted to do anything which is going to uh, completely, uh, like, annihilate an individual. I was always fine with, like, okay, crash that, uh, um, burn that, uh, make make the life terrible for this organization, but I never wanted it to be about a person. Um, but what you describe is quite a solitary gameplay, no? Isn't it? Because it's not your main character you really yeah, portray. Yeah. Yes, yes, you, you, have, you absolutely have a point there. And, and this was also one of the reasons why, uh, why I stopped eventually. Because yeah, you, you are constantly interacting with people and you are very, very busy involving yourself with the organizations, but there is always this barrier. You, you always have this barrier like, like, no, I'm actually not really their friend. I'm actually here to spy on them. And this is why, this is why these days I just hang out with, with Galmil and shoot the shit and have fun. And, uh, and don't do any duplicitous stuff because I, I so enjoy like, being myself. Yeah, and um, just because I'm also studying, um, now you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any fun in it, really? I mean, it, it's fun because, because perhaps of the yeah. mechanics or perhaps of the scientific detachment that you use um, to get it done. But is there really a lasting fun or is it a bitter taste? I don't know. I mean, yeah, good question. I, I look back at it with... Sometimes I just kind of like smile to myself and, or like laugh or remember, when I remember things. Um, at other moments, I, I think, like, yeah, well, yeah, could have gone differently, or like I could have been with those guys for real, or so. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do find it fun, but I think it's mostly from the scientific detachment point of view, and like, and like this, like playing this manip manip manipulative game that uh, that is sort of like it's a bit of a personal pleasure, but uh, not something that you can necessarily share with others. When EVESCAN came around, there, were actually, there was actually Tempest tried to create a sort of like shadowy spy network all over uh, New Eden. And, uh, and it partially even worked. I got contracts through that. Um, and then I thought like, yeah, yeah, you can hang out with the other spies. But then they were all such paranoid bastards and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I actually have one question. Uh, did you ever encounter a problem with your accent that people from maybe allies or something knew, like, hey, you were here and here? You mean that they, they recognize my voice or the yes. way I speak? Yes. Yeah, I, I did. I did when the, when somebody suggested the thing like try play a girl. I did play around with, with voice changes, and and while I didn't manage to to make a convincing female voice, I did manage just like few slight. 
um, um, changes and you sound a bit older or a bit younger or your voice sounds a bit deeper and uh, yeah like, like my accent I like, can sort of changes a little bit and, and like yeah, if, you, if you have a bit of act, uh, acting experience or something where you train yourself then you can 